So my name is Ali Edison and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Chemical Engineering. So the grand challenges that I'm trying to address is within healthcare technologies and medicine. Uh, in our laboratory, we design and develop medical devices for applications in, in medicine and healthcare technologies. So this includes ophthalmology, cardiology, neurosurgery and neurology, for example. We work with clinicians and surgeons across the London area and we collaborate with them. So they normally come, uh, come up with a problem and an idea uh, that they're facing in their current practice. For example, an ophthalmologist can have issues with a medical device or a diagnostic technology that they need to invent or improve or any other problem that they face in their uh, daily lives. And we collaborate with them to come up with you know, innovative solutions uh, and solve grand challenges in this area. Uh, for example, we are working with a, a neurosurgeon at the moment at UCL, and we are developing implantable diagnostic devices uh, for applications in neurosurgery and uh, to monitor patients in neurointensive care units. So the specific questions that we are trying to answer are mainly in biosensor design and development. So at the moment, one of the main challenges in the field is to develop continuous monitoring technologies for applications in medicine. Um, most of the sensors in the market today are one of use only and single use devices. So in our research, we try to develop real time monitoring technologies that can report on the concentrations of biomarkers. By biomarkers, I mean a disease target or a, uh, or a condition or a molecule uh, in the human body. So this may be, for example, a molecule such as glucose uh, in blood, uh, cerebral spinal fluid, or it can be in interstitial fluid as well. Biosensors are analytical devices that can report on the concentrations of uh, molecules in, in the body. Uh, for example, these devices can be electrochemistry based, or they can be optical based, or they can be magnetic. So the idea is that the, this analytical device as a biosensor will interact with a molecule and as a result of this interaction, it will produce a change and this change can be an optical signal or it can be an electrical signal such as voltage or, or, uh, or current change. And, and these changes can be correlated with the concentration or level of a specific uh, analyte or a target. Uh, so this can be a biomarker, for example, in the case of uh, diabetes, uh, we are measuring the concentration of glucose, uh, for example, uh, by measuring the concentration of glucose in, in, in blood, uh, we can correlate this uh, with hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia in a patient. So this is important, for example, in the case of new variable technologies. Um, there are new variable devices from companies such as Abbott, for example, Freestyle, um, and these devices can be attached on the skin or it, it can be a, in the form of a patch and they can serve as an analytical device that can communicate with your smartphone or an, or an, or, or an tablet device to give you information about, your, uh, about the glucose concentration in your blood. I would like to give an example of an exciting project that we are working in our laboratory at the moment. Uh, we are trying to make new innovations and advances on contact lens technology. So existing contact lenses, commercial contact lenses are mainly used for vision correction and they're also used for cosmetics applications. What, what we are trying to do in our, uh, in our laboratory is to design uh, and advance the contact lens technology uh, in the form of biosensors. So tear fluid or also called tear film uh, is a body fluid and it can be used as a surrogate for blood chemistry. So it mirrors uh, the concentrations of certain biomarkers and analytes uh, of, uh, of, from blood. So in our, in, our, in our laboratory, we are trying to design new types of biosensors based on contact lenses. So the first step to design and advance biosensors in, in the contact lens platform is to produce uh, an optical sensor. So this optical sensor can be based on a, a diffraction grating based system. It can be based on fluorescence. It can be based on bioluminescence, um, or it can be based on any other type of uh, optical sensing platform. 
And once we have, uh, once we develop these optical sensing platforms in the next stage, we integrate them on, on, a, on a contact lens. So we do this by, by 3D printing of the contact lens and also introducing these uh, biomarkers and biosensors on top of this contact lens. And once this process is complete, we can seal the contact lens so that, so that the biosensors will not leach into the tear film. In the next stage, we normally test the biosensors in a laboratory environment. So this involves testing their mechanical properties, for example, their tensile stress and strength. Uh, and we calculate, for example, the uh, elasticity and modulus of this type of devices so that they don't tear or wear uh, once they're worn um, by, by a patient. So once this process is complete, in the next level is that we uh, tend to uh, test them uh, in, in a laboratory setting and something we call uh, in vivo, uh, an in vitro platform. So what that means is that uh, we can, for example, use an, an simulated eye model to test the properties of, of the tear uh, from an artificial tear film. Once this device is validated in a, in a laboratory setting, in the next stage is that we obtain uh, human tear samples. So currently, for example, we are working with uh, Imperial Hospitals uh, to obtain uh, clinical samples from patients. In this case, it's tear film samples. They're very, very small in volume. So we're talking about 10 to 20 microliters. So it's like a drop of tear film. And we are testing them on these devices. So once we uh, complete the testing stage, we can analyze the data. So what this data tells us is that we can, for example, find out selectivity, sensitivity, uh, limit of detection of this type of um, contact lens device biosensors. So these contact lenses can have applications, for example, in diabetes. So we can monitor the concentration of glucose in tears and which can be used as a surrogate medium for blood chemistry. So we can, for example, predict whether a patient has uh, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia uh, in this case. We can also use these devices for uh, monitoring dry eye disease. So this involves measurement of electrolytes. For example, this can be uh, sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium uh, in, in tear film. And by measuring the concentrations and sensing the concentrations of these biomarkers, we can predict whether a patient has dry eye. So this is particularly important prior and after the LASIK surgeries and refractive eye surgeries in which the eye needs to be monitored, especially the physiology eye of the eye needs to be monitored very closely. In our work, we have a number of challenges. Uh, I would like to start from the most important one. So we are trying to design selective and sensitive sensors, uh, in this case, optical sensing technologies that can produce reliable results. So the results need to have um, a, a diagnostic range. What that means is that they need to be reliable when uh, they're used in patient samples. It can be a blood sample, tear sample, or, or urine sample, for example. Uh, and we would like the sensors to be compatible with other diagnostics instruments in, uh, in hospital settings. The second important challenge is the manufacturability of this type of devices. Although research is very exciting, eventually these devices must be translated to the industry and they must be mass produced. So for that reason, we are working on uh, new types of technologies, including 3D printing of medical devices and their mass manufacturing. And the last challenge is mainly the testing the utility of these devices in hospital settings. So this involves uh, compatibility with the existing technologies and equipment in hospitals. Also, they need to meet the user requirements by uh, the people who will be using them. So this includes uh, the nurses, healthcare staff, uh, sometimes even it can be a neurosurgeon in hospital settings.